We're back here on the bonus round from the I Am 8 Big Gallery in Los Angeles with Glenn Schofield, Shane Satterfield, and Garnet Lee. This week we are going to talk about Sony PlayStation and what we can expect in 2013. The first thing I will say about 2013 is there are some major PlayStation 3 games still due out in 2013, including The Last of Us, God of War Ascension, Beyond Two Souls. Trying to, I guess those are the three main ones. But, uh, I mean, big titles still due for PS3. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it, going back to what we were talking about in the Microsoft episode where they have no first-party support or exclusive yeah. games, you know, here we are in, you know, what would be considered like the last part of a console's life cycle, and they're still pumping out the exclusive content for the PlayStation 3. Um, hasn't made a huge dent in the Xbox 360's lead over the last couple of years, which I'm a little surprised at, uh, but you can't fault Sony for trying, certainly. No, and I think just as a gamer, I mean, even if you own multiple systems, I mean, there's going to be some great content coming out for PlayStation 3. And you look at something like The Last of Us from Naughty Dog, I mean, that is not just going to be a great PlayStation 3 game, it's going to be a great game, I think, you know, artistically for our business, that we're going to see things like that come out uh, towards the end of the cycle. I mean, Garnet, do you feel like, uh, you know, Sony has so many games coming out. Do you think that's going to mean they're going to be later talking about what they're doing next because they, they want to get through these games? I don't think so. I think they learned a lesson from the PS3 transition, but they're still sticking to their guns of, we're going to have a smooth transition. We're going to respect you, customer, who bought a PS2 and a PS3 and have been part of the PlayStation world for a long time. We're not going to slam the door. Keep in mind, Xbox was their first device, and then they moved to 360, and they felt comfortable saying, okay, you know what, we're going to close off the Xbox, that was our foundation, we're going to move to 360. I think the Microsoft faces a much different sort of transition now coming into this generation, but they're not lined up for it. Whereas Sony, look at those three titles you just rattled off. I'm excited for all of them, and they've done this before. They know how to, like, carry the tail out and bring you into the beginning of the next generation of PlayStation. Well, I remember, I think it was... Uh, the original God, God of War God, did that, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah, I think it was like... Or, right yeah, at it was the like, end? Exactly, it was like, yeah, it came out, or it was... Was, yeah, it was a God of War. God of War 2 came out, I think, for PS2. I think God, God of War, War 2 came yeah, out God for PS2 2, yes, after yeah. PS3 had shipped. And right. GT4. Right. Yep, exactly, which is crazy. And I mean, that was, you never, you know, it doesn't well. seem rational, but they do it. And I mean, they really just, what I love about Sony and, you know, Shu Yoshida is they just respect the content. Yes. And they just want to, you know, let the game creators make the games that they want to make. I mean, even Last Guardian is floating out there somewhere. <laughs> I knew someone had Maybe to that's that coming out for PS3 or who knows. Or but maybe it's, it's a launch game for PS4. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, it's, when you look as a developer at Sony, I mean, the first party studios, I mean, what do you think? Because I, I just, I, I, do, you, do you feel that they're making some of the best games out there? Well, uh, yeah, I do. And I think the, uh, the God of War team has been known in making great games. They know how to pull everything out of the, uh, the system. Yep. And, you know, when you're talking about something that we've been working on for five, six, seven years now, uh, we know how to get every little bit out of it. Every game is going to get better. Uh, you know how to make your content quicker and better. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that game. Absolutely. And so you've got, you know, three huge titles for PlayStation 3. PlayStation Vita is still out there. Uh, over Thanksgiving, I was at a couple of retailers, and they said Vita was actually selling well because they did these, you know, really cheap bundles with uh, Assassin's Creed Liberation and games like that. When you look at Vita for 2013, there's not a ton on the horizon. And there was, I think, a kill zone that was teased at Gamescom and some other titles. Uh, you know, Vita should be able to do everything you can do with a Nintendo gamepad, but it's a separate purchase. What do you think about the fate of Vita in 2013? I mean, I feel like it's, it's going to be challenging for Sony to keep up momentum on that system. Yeah, I agree. I, I, don't, I don't see too many developers jumping in headlong into it and, um, you know, wanting to, to make a game for it right now. I don't see a lot of support for it. Well, it's so hard, I think, for developers to, you know, top studios to say, hey, we're going to devote resources exclusively to making a game for the PlayStation Vita. I almost feel like that would be a better system for you know smaller studios like Sound Shapes, Queasy Games, and those kind of guys to embrace that system as a delivery mechanism for smaller games. Because yeah, I mean to have big blockbuster titles do exclusive versions. I think they got you know they got an Assassins, they got a Call of Duty this year, and there's you know remember right. Bioshock yeah. exactly, and and you know Bioshock's talked about maybe Ken Levine and Irrational's going to do a Vita game, but I I don't know if I can really imagine that if I want Ken and his team spending all their time making just a Vita game. I think it depends on how Sony is able to position this device as a partner part of PlayStation. Right. You know, it started off as Vita as a separate handheld, and I think they've now realized that the going is too rough there. You know, that market at place has changed so much with the introduction of mobile phones and pads and tablets, and it's just a different space. But you've seen what they've done now with 
transparency being coming a kind of buzzword, which we, we laugh about, but there's some yeah. cool ideas there, right? There's some stuff that you can do that's, that's better than what you can do with the Wii U pad because you can take the Vita with you wherever you go. No, through. I mean, the, the idea of cross-play and, you know, the idea of, like, buying a game like All-Stars and getting, like, a digital version on Vita, you know, as part of the package and things like that, I mean, that's That a becomes cool, a like, big deal, right? That well, I think it's a cool double-edged sword, though, because it's like... I think a lot of people look at the Vita and they're like, and even the marketing for it is like, it's a console you can take with you. And right. I think a lot of people see that and they're like, but I don't want to take a console with me. I like to kick my feet up on the couch when I play my console. Right. The other fear that I have with the Vita is that it's falling into the same trap that Wii U could fall in, where it just becomes a dumping ground for ports. And we're already seeing it. Where, And it's funny because Sony has been so good with the PlayStation 3, making sure there's exclusive content for that. What has happened with the Vita? I mean, we did get an exclusive Call of Duty. All due respect to you, it was a terrible game. And you could totally see that the game was sent out early because they had already made all these deals with bundles. Um, they had to set, chip the game out at holiday season because they already have all these bundles shipping out. So the Assassin's Creed game for it was decent, but not up to the standards. The game I'm actually most excited about is, is Tearaway from Media Molecule, which right, I think could yeah. be interesting and different. And there are you know, some hints of some cool things, but you're right, I mean, for a full system, I mean, the amount of support it would need from Sony, I think it's just untenable. I just don't think it's possible. And because you're also talking about these are console quality games, these aren't games that you can put a team of 20 or 30 guys on and they can crank it out in a year. Like, you're on a full console development cycle with these games. Well, Assassins, I mean, you've got, you know, motion capture and voiceover and music, and you're right, it's hard to justify doing that all for a handheld game. All right, guys, we'll be right back after this.